Whew. So, this has been in my mind for quite some time now, and I just really want to share right now. So, I've been under this impression that there is a huge similarity between what you see in SJW comic books and modern art. You see a total breakdown and collapse of having any sort of standards in developing a competent and appealing style of art and replacing it with absolute garbage. Just total garbage. They're trash. I mean, it's just so bad. And you just gotta wonder what the hell happened. Now, here's my personal theory. If you notice that one thing that all these SGW creators have in common and all these hack artists that are producing all this, these garbage paintings and just having no sense of style or this idea that everything is beautiful, that, you know, beauty doesn't matter or, you know, these oppressive societal beauty standards that they keep screaming about, they're all communists. That's just the reality. They call themselves progressives, but we should really call them as communists and socialists. That's all they are. Seriously, ask a progressive, they'll usually say they believe in something that you'll see a communist or a socialist believe in. And what you need to know about communism is in their flawed ideology, they believe that everyone is equal. The concept that everyone is equal is an idealistic and a ridiculous concept because even non-human species, especially mammals, have hierarchies where not every animal is equal. You have the leaders, such as the alphas, the followers, like the omegas, and so on and so forth. So, when you take this idea that, let's say, all art is equal, you can't have a standard. Because if all art is equal, then what is good and bad art? They're just going to say, well, it's all up to your interpretation that you shouldn't hold art to standards because, you know, that's old-fashioned, that's oppressive, you know, everyone deserves a medal, everyone should get a participation trophy. And that's one of the reasons why modern art is terrible and why SJW comic books look like garbage. Because the people who are writing these comic books and drawing these comic books as well, believe that you, as a critic or fan, should not demand that they be held to very high standards, despite the fact that they're writing for companies and sometimes writing for characters who have been around since the 1950s and beyond. Characters who have over 50 plus years of history. But that's the thing, is uh, they don't think that, that they should be held to these standards because they are so, their own sense of self-worth and their huge ego to acknowledge that that their art style is anything but great that's just the fact in their own head they are already perfect there's no need for improvement they are absolutely uninfallible or uninfallible whatever you want to call it you just can't you can't really debate with them and it especially is hard. It doesn't help the fact that in social media, these people get hundreds, if not thousands of likes and you, like, you know, glow about how, you know, the creator of America is revolutionizing comic books and all that hot garbage and stuff. <laughs> so is it really surprising that these people refuse to listen to reason and are just falling back and doubling down on the fact that they're just going to call someone a Nazi, a racist, a homophobe, a sexist, and all that other, you know, attacks that they make against fans? This is the fact. Be thanks to social media 
and all the attention that these, you know, comic book pros get on these platforms, it gives them a false sense that they are celebrities. They are great. You know, they can do no wrong. People are going to love their work, regardless of how bad it is. And that's just the fact. Now, in my personal opinion, I personally think that comic book creators have a shelf life. You know, you can only do it for so long before, you know, your art starts, your style starts to slip. You can't produce the same amount of masterpieces or great books that you used to, which is why a lot of comic book creators tend to move on after, let's say, about 10 years, I think is the average, maybe five to 10 years. I haven't really calculated it, but it seems like comic book writers Comic book writers, unlike novelists, tend to not really last as long. I'm not sure about artists, but especially writers, they tend to have a shelf life. But that's the thing. So, if you look at modern art, you have paintings that are hot garbage. Like, such as one of these paintings is Untitled. That's the name of it, Untitled. It essentially is just a bunch of strokes of red paint over a canvas. It looks like something a toddler paint would have painted. That's basically it. Something that a toddler could do. And it sold for over 40 million fucking dollars. 40 million fucking dollars for essentially a canvas with wild strokes of red paint. And you know how this thing is described? It's described in extremely big, complex words to basically show you, to basically try and fool people into thinking that it is more than just hot, total garbage. Yeah, seriously. When your initial instinct for seeing such a painting is basically, this is absolute shit. That's basically your first instinct when you look at a painting like this. So that's, that's what we're doing with comic books. Comic books are very similar to that right now when it comes to these SJW stories. It's the artwork is normally shit, the storyline is hot garbage, and your initial instincts is to call themselves call them out on that, but then you have all these, you know, critics, these SGW critics, these fake diversity fans, all that crap. They basically say, oh, it's so daring, it's so revolutionary, it's so important to the medium that this comic book exists. You know, forget the art, forget the story, this is all important. See, here's the thing about SJW Marvel. Okay, with Image Comics back in the 90s, they valued art over storyline. With Valiant Comics around, Valiant Comics around that time, they valued story over art. With SJW Marvel and all the other SJW comic books out there, they value force diversity over art and story. <laughs> Let that sink in for a moment. So you're taking something that is even worse than, than the flaws behind the other two I mentioned, you know, such as, you know, you want to have good art, but you also want to have good story. So you want to have both, but you know, sometimes some companies tend to focus on the other compare, oh, sorry, tend to focus more on one instead of the other. Me personally, as a writer, I prefer story over art. That's my personal opinion because, you know, I'm a writer, so I kind of have to be biased and take the size of the writer. But anyway, you know, that doesn't stop there being, there being good comics from Image and all those other um, artist-driven, more artist-driven companies that publish those comic books. But anyway, so you have a group of people who are basically socialists or communists, take your picture, view standards to be either part of the patriarchy white supremacy or capitalism namely one of those three things when you call them out on their shit they're going to double down on some of those three things now here's my personal message to companies like disney warner brothers dc marvel and all that stuff you are a corporation you're an industry that makes money by selling to consumers and you know private citizens you make money off of those people you're following the capitalistic system that's a fact when you're making a product 
and selling it to a citizen of the United States and people abroad across the world and other countries, you're following a very capitalistic free market system. Do you mean, honestly want to tell me that you think that people who are anti-capitalistic, who are communist and socialist, you honestly think that they care about your profits, your revenue, you know, about your industry being successful and not getting killed overnight? You think they care? Ask yourself that. Think about that for a moment. Do you think that socialists and communists care about that? You think that they don't care? You don't think, so you think that they care about anything other than their revolution that they want to see happen all across America? You don't think that in a heartbeat, they would immediately stab you in the back, take all your money and redistribute it, redistribute it to like the supposed oppressed minorities or oppressed class? You don't think they would do that. See, I understand. You guys are scared about bad PR, you know, and the side effect of the SJWs screaming and shouting oppression, racism, sexism, and all that stuff. I get it. You're scared about PR. But in the long run, catering to these people are going to make you lose a lot of money and potentially go bankrupt. And I got to say this. You need to grow some balls and stand up to these fuckers because they are going to kill you in the long run. Yeah, you may be worried about being labeled misogynistic and white supremacist and all that crap, but trust me, where you're going right now is a life of debt and you know total hot garbage and being a joke and run over by the more braver publishers in the industry. So, yeah. When I look at modern art and yesterday we comic books, I see um, I see two mediums that have been completely infested by communists and socialists who have no sense of standards. They have no sense of beauty. They just all they care about is sending out their political message with their divisive, authoritarian and just snarky, narcissistic ideology. That's it. Same thing in comic books. It's very similar. You can see in Hollywood. Hollywood has a similar problem too. But no matter how much money that anti-SJW books make, no matter how much fan support that people like Donald J. Thump, Ethan Van Skyver, Diversity in Comics, and all these other, you know, all these other independent you know, non SJW creators are getting, it doesn't matter because the SJWs are, have friends in the mainstream media and in the pop culture media as well. You get all those articles by Buzzfeed, Slate, the Mary Sue, you know, even CNN sometimes have, have like the occasional articles based on pop culture. You have all these different organizations in the mainstream media, basically virtue signaling and praising all these SJW creators who are basically going around having hissy fits and trying to silence people they deem offensive. Yeah, that's the reason why these companies are so scared. And it's really sad. Because, you know, there was a time when companies used to stand up to negative PR, but I guess the incessant demands for political correctness, the infestation of Marxism in our education system and entertainment industry. I guess these companies are gonna have to learn the hard, hard way by seeing their wallets become a lot lighter. Well, it's really sad, but as a capitalist, I know for a fact that they're going to change, you know? And if they disappear, someone's gonna come up and take their place. And I think it's going to be a good thing if they refuse to change. Because you know what? You have to adapt or die. And if comic books like Marvel and DC don't adapt to the reality that no one no one buys SJW comic books, they sell really crappy. These SJW fans that you keep trying to get into your books, 
they don't buy them and you're losing money and you're producing hot garbage and you're pissing off a lot of longtime loyal fans who pay money for your shit. So if you want to be successful again and make money and be able to continue on as a successful business, you need to cut off the fat. And that fat is the SJWs. You need to cut that fat off and do it quickly and hire some actual talent and people who know what they're doing and the editors you editors need to do your job and to keep these fuckers in line because when you don't have good ed editors you're going to have a good deal of writers who think they can do whatever they want and feel like they can do no wrong and when that sort of narcissism and egomania, egomania goes to their head they're going to produce hot garbage I know people want to say that we don't need editors, but trust me, we do. Editors can be extremely important because they can tell the writers to go back and do something again and to change things potentially for the better. So yeah, editors are important. Editors are just as important as the writers and artists because they help keep people in line and keep people focused and get the ideas on that they want on paper. So yeah. Anyway, this was just, you know, a rant about how I think that modern art and SJW comic books are basically one and the same, or at least extremely similar. So if you like what you saw here, then just hit the like button and subscribe. I hope to have more videos like this and you're finally getting to see my face. So I hope I don't get doxxed because of this, because I find this might be an interesting and new way to make videos like this. So anyway. This is Billy signing out.